in brooding beauty whose parallel one would have far to seek stand California's high Sierras. Fisherman's paradise and hunter's haven where the defacing hand of civilization has fallen but lightly and nature's vestments are displayed in all her rugged primeval abandon. Along. You know I don't like anyone in my workroom. Did you sleep at all last night? Now, please don't ask silly questions. Run along. You're going to make yourself ill working night after night without rest. Why don't you go to bed? I'll have Celia bring you breakfast and then you can sleep till... I'm fine, I'm fine. Now, stop worrying about me. Oh, Father, you're not going out now. I've got some business to attend to. Now, go to bed. It's too early for you to be up. Do as I tell you. Yes, Father. imagination you got and on only two bottles of beer I tell you I saw it <sighs> don't sound right no how to me they ain't no critters that big in this country oh he's kidding three times the size of a mountain lion and got the tusks of an elephant it ain't natural oh you guys give me a pain in my eardrum why in places would I think of a cockeyed yarn like this man I used to live in Texas I've heard some mighty tall stories down that way Folks take pride in outlying the other fella. Well, danged if I don't think you Californians... I'm a liar, am I? Oh, no offense, Mr. Wheeler. Texas lying, I mean. And Texas lies is friendly lies. That's all I was aiming to say. I was just going to have some coffee. About 7 o'clock this morning when I heard it. The darndest... Evening, boys. Fog rolling down from the peak. George, you know Mr. Wheeler? This is George Oakes, the game warden hereabouts. Yeah, sure, we've met before. Good hunting, Mr. Wheeler. All the earnest kind you ever heard tell of. Yeah? Go ahead and tell George, Mr. Wheeler. He's the man knows all about this country and what's in it. Been herding hunters and game around here for now on to 30 years. If you think I'm going to be laughed at by you birds oh, all over... Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Mr. Wheeler. We won't laugh no more. <laughs> a good joke? That's what these fellas think. Well, this morning, having coffee, heard the darndest roar off away, some animal. Took up the trail about a quarter of a mile. I was using my binoculars, and I saw... Yeah? What? What did you see? 
I don't know. <laughs> What's so funny? Three times as big as a mountain lion and tusks like old Jumbo. <laughs> Shouldn't kid these town hunters that way. Bad for business. Discourages them. Evening, boys. Mr. Oaks. Driving up from the village? Yes, yes, on the way home. Meet uh, anything on the road? No, no, fog's getting a bit thick for anybody to be out, I suppose. See any game? What do you mean? Game? No, no, nothing, nothing. Why? Oh, nothing, nothing. Well, be seeing you. Yes. Good night, Mr. Oaks. Night, Professor. You weren't on a spree last night, George, and was seeing things? You know me better than that, Andy. Come on and keep your eyes peeled. Ground still wet. There should be some tracks around. I'll believe it when I see them. Hey, Andy. Look. By golly. Must be about the biggest mountain lion this side of Noah's Ark. Mountain lion, heck. I never saw a mountain lion look like that cat I met up with last night. What do you make of it? There ain't no such critter. I'd say the same thing if I hadn't seen it myself. It don't stand a normal reason. You know this country as well as me. Did you ever run across any such thing before? Can't say I have. Sheriff. Howdy, Tim. Mr. Oaks. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do about it, George? What's on your mind, son? What else could be on my mind? My cattle. I work hard raising them, and I don't aim to have no murdering mountain cat ripping their guts out every other night. Lose another steer? Fourth in less than a week, and I'm getting sick and tired of it. What do we got a game warden for if these marauders are going to roam the countryside at will and kill off a man's stock? We do all we can. Well, it ain't enough. If the game commission can't cope with the situation, raise the bounty on these varmints and attract civilian hunters. One thing I know, I ain't going to stand much longer Take for... Take it easy, son. Give me a few facts. You, uh, ever catch sight of this cat? No. I laid traps for him, but he must be a whopper. He smashes everyone and don't leave hide nor hair behind. Been flirting with the idea of poison bait, but I'm afraid my own dogs might chaw on it. The surest way's a bullet. But you've got to get out after this critter. That's what I'm aiming to do. Where? Right now. If anybody wants me, I'll be in Los Angeles until tomorrow night. Los Angeles? What in fun are you going to do there? The trouble's up here. Well, I might get a line on it there. Hi, boys. I believe you're looking for me. The receptionist phoned you we're here. Dr. Harkness? Yes. Oaks is my name. Oh, glad to meet you, Mr. Oaks. Thank Come inside. You. Thank you. It looks as if you fabricated it quite recently. Yesterday morning. I must congratulate you on your zoological precision, sir. 
This is an extremely well-articulated model. Model? Heck! I made it from the real thing. I don't follow you, Mr. Oakes. What in thunderation sort of animal is this thing from, Doc? Well, I'd say it was a, an extremely well-defined print of an extraordinarily large member of the cat family. A cat? With tusks? Tusks? Tusks. No, oh, no, that's impossible. Only member of the cat family with tusks was a saber-toothed tiger. And he's been extinct on Earth for over a million years. You're kidding. Literal truth. We have a well-mounted skeleton of the species in that room outside. Extinct on Earth for over a million years. Conservatively. Then how come I met up with one only the night before last? And don't look at me like it was crazy, Doc. It's heaven's own truth, night before last. Mr. Oakes, I'm sure you'll find your hobby stimulating, but really this is one of my busy days. It's been a great pleasure meeting you. Now, if I can be of any aid in supplying you data to help you in your modeling, I shall be only too glad to. Dang it, man, don't treat me like a harmless crackpot. I am a state officer, and I aim to be listened to with consideration. You can have little to complain of my patience, sir. Heck, with that sort of patience. It's the sort of man uses for kids and folks in their second childhood, and I ain't neither. Then don't assume I am. I don't. Your actions say otherwise. What sort of nonsense do you think you can waste my time with? Pushing under my nose with a sober face a cast of a print of an animal whose very memory has been almost lost in time. And telling me you had a social encounter with it night before last. What do you take me for? A scientific feller whose job ought to tell him that nothing in nature is impossible or could be. I'm sorry, Mr. Oakes. Your statement is incredible. But your earnestness convincing. If you had an encounter with this beast, then you're the only human being in the history of the world who ever lived to tell it. It was on a lonely backcountry mountain road. I was in my car. The thing couldn't get to me. I blasted on my horn and scared it off. I see. Was the animal you say you saw anything like this? Spitting image. Mr. Oakes, I hope... I most sincerely hope you are telling me what at least you believe is the truth. As far as any truth in this fantastic subject may be believed. I... I swear it on the Bible. Obviously, there's some ready explanation. A simple scientific inquiry will quickly reveal, but... It interests me as a side reflection of my work. Would you like me to come up to your neighborhood over the weekend? You gonna let me take you home tonight? Maybe. Wouldn't want to see you going out alone with the boogeyman out there. Can't be worse than some of the guys who come in here with notions at times. Thank you. Coffee, please. By the way, do you have any idea where I may locate a Mr. Oakes? George? Yes, his office said he was headed this way. He was, a couple hours ago. Say, Danny. Yes, ma'am. Did George Oakes say where he was bound? Well, he's uh, checking up on some reports of deer shooting out of season. He drove up San Marco Canyon cutoff. I guess he's over the ridge. He's probably scouting around in the timber. Well, he probably won't be back for a spell. He must have left his car over at the old Elliott place. That's as far as he could drive. You couldn't miss him if you wanted to trail him. Thanks a lot, Danny. Yes, ma'am. He drives a small station wagon. See, that gives me an idea. You, uh, you two ought to know each other. <laughs> this lady's stuck here. Gasket on her car blew, and it's gonna have to stay blown until we can get a part up from Bishop. She was bound out to Professor Grove's place for the weekend. He rents the old Elliott place. Would you... Uh, would you give her a lift if you're heading that way? I'd be glad to. How about my coffee? Oh, I don't wish to impose. Be delighted. Most kind of you. Not at all happy to be of service. Ruth Marshall's her name. Dr. Ross Harkness. Hunting? Possibly. Did I understand rightly you're planning a weekend up here? With my fiancé. And if you ask me why an otherwise intelligent, charming fellow should bury himself up here, I couldn't answer you. Was that the Professor Groves the girl mentioned? Yes, anthropologist. Taught at the university. Written quite a bit, too. 
Oh, that grows. The evolution of early man in North America. I see air bloom. My, I must say this place agrees with you. Uh, this gentleman. Ross Harkness. I was coming to it, Dr. Harkness. Don't rush me. He was kind enough to drive me up here when my car got temperamental down at Webb's Cafe. Don't say I never bring you anything. Oh, don't mind her, Doctor. Ruth enjoys being outrageous. Won't you please come in? Uh, thanks, but I'm looking for the game warden. Is he here? Uh, that's his car, isn't it? Well, he's gone up into the back country and left his car here. No roads. He won't be back until sometime tomorrow. I see. And where's your father, darling? Los Angeles. He's speaking there at the Naturalist Society. I hope one point has been impressed upon you following this demonstration. A prehistoric man was not the ape creature so extravagantly sensationalized by Sunday newspaper supplement portrait. In this skull of the chimpanzee, notice the piece of black paper I place here over the site of the brain. Observe its size. From it has developed the largest brain known to apes. Compare it with the Java ape man. <laughs> a misnomer if there ever was one. The brain is four times the size of the chimpanzee. This was a man and no ape. A man whose mentality <laughs> compares favorably with a great many persons. Circumstance has led me to associate with and address. Do I understand you correctly, Professor Groves? Are you advancing the astonishing concept that the mentality of primitive man compares favorably with that organ which a million years of evolutionary progress has developed in his modern counterpart? Let me assure you, for want of your own understanding, that modern man's boasting pride in his alleged advancement is based upon one hollow precept, and that is his ego. I suppose you have some scientific proof for your egotistic theory, Professor. No. Merely an awareness of the comic strip mentality which now debates with me. Built down man. Size of brain. Cro-Magnon man. Size of brain. Neanderthal man. Size of brain. Impressive, is it not? And thou for our glorious modern man, of whose species you all take such inordinate pride in being a part, here is his skull, and here is his brain. Where is this devastating advance to Olympian mentality? May I remind you, Professor, that it is a long-exploded theory that the size of a man's skull or the weight of his brain has any direct bearing on the quality of his intelligence. That you should think so doesn't surprise me at all. Whether your skull is thicker or your intelligence thinner, I can't determine. Uh, Professor Groves, I must ask you to conduct yourself with at least a semblance of professional decorum. This is supposed to be a dispassionate meeting of scientific interest. We've heard you expound your somewhat fantastic and unsupported theories with considerable patience. But we refuse to be subjected to abuse when we disagree with you. This is my cross. The penalty of being born into an era of little men who are small even in their spites. You're creatures of paper, bred of an artificial culture whose dearest possessions is your prejudices and important only in the hollowness of your smirking vanities. Hypocrisy is your Bible. Stupidity is the cornerstone of your existence and dishonesty your human essence. As it is impossible to continue this discussion with Professor Groves present, I suggest we adjourn. Run, you mean. Tuck your fears between your legs and run from new truths. And Professor Groves, we must ask you not to invade these premises again with theories which charity compels me to state as an aspect of lunacy. Gentlemen, the meeting is adjourned. Lunacy, is it? In other words, you will never accept a new idea unless it is offered with proof. You have no vision, only sight. Small men, small views. You want proof, do you? Well, I'll give you proof. I'll show you such proof that no men have ever had.
think I'd better call today. It doesn't look as if your father will get here tonight. If it won't cause you any inconvenience, I believe I'll turn in, too. Poor girl. Deaf mute. Celia will show you to your room, Doctor. Thanks so much. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Doctor. have decided to stay in the city. No. Celia tells me he returned early this morning before dawn. His car's in the shed, but his bed hasn't been slept in. Well, speak of the old devil, and there he is. Oh, hello, Dad. Had breakfast? Eh? You shouldn't have driven all night. Could just have easily started out this morning after a good night's rest. Oh, I had some work to do. I had no idea we were entertaining guests. Guests? I'm your fiancé, remember? This is Dr. Harkness, Father. How do you do? Harkness? Yes, sir. He drove me up last night when my car broke down at Webb's Cafe. Your daughter was gracious enough to ask me to stay the night. Well, since it's now morning, I presume there's nothing to detain you longer. I'm sure Dr. Harkness would be more comfortable here than staying in one of Mr. Webb's creaky motel rooms. No doubt. But we're not running a public hostelry. Please, I don't wish to trespass. I can understand the professor's irritation. I am an intruder. I don't mean to be rude, but I'm much too busy to be a good host. Well, it's kind of you ladies to defend my presence, but I don't think I should. You let me do your thinking in this case, Doc. <clears throat> well, more visitors. Need some life around this place. <laughs> Morning. Morning. Come to pick up my car. Oh, Dr. Harkness. Uh, Mr. Oaks. Fine. I was expecting to have to go back to Webb's Cafe to pick you up. I spent the night here. Any more adventures? It jumped a fawn last night, less than a few miles from here. It? What? They were talking about some local superstition down at Webb's Cafe. Surely there's no basis of fact in this. Right, there's more than a basis, miss. There seems to be no sense in the world at all anymore. Oaks, you ought to be ashamed of yourself running around the countryside telling this preposterous story. It ain't a story, Professor. 
Ask the doc here. Good heavens, you're not telling me that a clear-thinking professional man gives any credence to this wild tale? Naturally not, until I'm given some proof. What I showed you in Los Angeles seemed proof enough to get you up here. Is that why you came here, Dr. Harkness? Mr. Oakes intrigued my curiosity, and I needed a little diversion. Those are my reasons, Miss Groves. The world's gone completely mad. Sometimes I think I'm the only rational being left in it. One person telling a fairy story and the other believing it. Have it your way, Professor, and let me have it mine. You ready, Doc? I'll get my gun. Excuse me. Morning. Stupidity. Stupidity is contagious. One person suffers from it and has no difficulty infecting the other. Well, at least a walk in the fresh air won't do them any harm. I wish your father wouldn't be so arbitrary. But it is ridiculous for Mr. Oakes to drag Dr. Harkness all over the countryside on such a fantastic expedition. It is, isn't it? <laughs> Thanks, Mayor, from here. End the road. Look there. Broken spine. Looks like one clean blow did it. Here's where he waited. Leaped on the critter from the top of that rock. Judging from the condition of the carcass, he must have killed just for the fun of it. Hasn't even taken a bite. Must have had the full belly already. Yes. But when he gets a bit hungry, he'll remember this kill and come back to get it. Sure as shooting. Then let's take out. Better than trying to hunt him down. Maybe a long wait. After a million years, <laughs> nothing could be. Hear anything? It's what I don't hear. That owl, those frogs, the wood mice. Ain't been a peep out of none of them for over several minutes now. Can you still see that carcass? Faintly. Good thing there's a moon. Shh. Oh, wait. Wait till he comes out of the brush. Wounded, he's worse than unharmed. Had him dead to rights. Couldn't have missed. Keep your sights on that clearing. Take no chances. Give him a couple more. Let's go. Good heavens above. Believe me now? Size, color, coat, tusks. Adds up? Yes, it adds up. To an utter incomplete impossibility. Pretty solid impossibility, if you ask me. Nature just doesn't create or destroy a species overnight. There must be some explanation for a phenomenon of this kind. And while I can't for the life of me explain such an amazing throwback, there's one deduction we have to make. What's that? Well, if there's one of these creatures, it's only biologically natural to assume there must be another. A mate? Yes. What'll we do? Get help. I must have this carcass. It's the greatest find in zoological history. I want somebody else to see it, right where we bagged it. Two men might be accused of hallucinations. Three is a different story. I'll get him if he's up this early. Wouldn't worry about that. Here he comes now. Good morning. <clears throat> uh, good morning, good morning. Uh, getting an early start? You're up pretty early yourself, Professor. <laughs> Couldn't sleep. Professor, we'd like you to come with us. <laughs> well, thank you very much, but I'm not much of a hunting man. I prefer the uh, less vigorous hobbies. We're not going hunting. We've just come back. We'd like to show you the result. <laughs> well, I'm sure your pride and your prowess is justified, Doctor, but I don't share your enthusiasm for the outdoor pastimes. We need you as a witness, Professor. Eh? Witness? We bagged it. Bagged it? Bagged what, for heaven's sakes? 
A few miles over the ridge, that big cat with the tusks. A saber-toothed tiger. <laughs> Are you men sober? Sober as anybody could be who sat up hours in the mountains waiting for that critter to come back to its kill. You're out of your mind. I want you to confirm my identification of this animal. Don't be nonsensical, man. I'd expected to hear more intelligent remarks from you. Frankly, I'm at a loss for any. Very well, if you insist on this preposterous expedition, we'd appreciate it. Now, see for yourself. I told you I intensely dislike practical jokes. All I can say is I cannot determine now which I admire less than you, sir. Your humor or your wit. But it was... We left it there deader than a door nail. I can swear to that. Oh, come now, Oaks. You're a sensible man. Or at least I've always considered you such. Admit it was some practical joke which is misfired, and I'll call upon my charity to overlook this dismal escapade. Please spare us that lofty air, Professor. We brought you here for a purpose. I have no doubt of it. And I've already expressed my opinion of it. Oaks will bear me out. Whatever you choose to deny. The beast was dead. I'm positive. I wonder who could have moved it. If you gentlemen have played out your shabby farce, I'd appreciate being driven home to breakfast. Everything has a logical explanation in science. I refuse to believe the supernatural. There must be some logical cause and effect to this, this unholy adventure. Reckon there must. Any ideas? Well, no. Please, I'm busy. What I have to say won't take long. You know I don't want anybody coming to my workroom. This is my first intrusion. It may be my last. What do you want? I want you, the man I once knew. The good companion, the cheerful friend. I want the happiness we once found each other. I want... What has come between us, Cliff? What is this unhappy work which absorbs you so much and is undermining your nervous system and making you such an intolerable sorehead? I'm not aware that I'm any different than I ever was. You're not aware of anything, least of all me. You're ruining your health and heading for a nervous breakdown. Why, it's as plain as... as a cat in that cage. What is this work you're doing? Why can't you confide in me? That is my business. Haven't I any right to share it? It wouldn't interest you. You... Oh, you old self-centered lummox. Everything you do interests me. Everything you'll ever do interests me for the rest of our lives. If you can't trust me, who can you trust? I won't be laughed at anymore. I would never laugh at you, darling. Who would ever laugh? They laughed. That pack of thick-headed, egotistical stuff shirts the Naturalist Club. Lunacy, eh? Long exploded theories, eh? A lot they know in their stupid obstinacy, in their peevishness of mind and soul. It's here, I tell you. All here. After all this work, I've done it. I know I have. What? Done what? Cliff, what is it? The embodiment of my theories of memory stimulation. The reactivation of the dormant cells of the mind of man. Dormant cells? Man is not of himself. He's made of everything that has gone before. He's part of every ancestor he ever had back to the beginnings of his human intelligence. They derided me, those gentlemen at the club. They scoffed. Why, at least couldn't he have admitted the possibility I was right? Man has lost nothing of his emotions from the dawn of his history. He's lost nothing of his greed, his fury, his savagery, his jungle rapacity. Why not his physical personality? All right. You, you, you deny me, too. I can see it in your eyes. They put it into words, but you're thinking it. Cliff, please, there's no need to get so... I didn't ask you to come here. I know, but Please I... do me the favor by leaving. Cliff, please. Get out, I say! Don't speak to me like that. Please. I don't pretend to be a saint. My patience is an end, too. 
I don't ask for your forbearance. I don't ask anything of anybody. I didn't ask you to foist yourself on me in my house. All I ask is to be left alone. You're not well. Please come upstairs. We're leaving this place. It's no good for you. Cliff, I beg. You're no better than the rest of them. You're nothing but a vacuum of ego, swelling, ready to burst, thinking your own empty desires to be all that there is in life. But there are more important things than your puny adoration of self. And I, and I want you out of here. I don't wish to know you, Cliff. I'll leave. But if you ever want me, ever need me, you know where to find me. Goodbye. could have happened between Ruth and father to send her off like that. He must have been very rude to her. She told me she was going down to Charlie Webb's. I'll drive down there later and try to patch things up if you like. They must have had a quarrel. I don't blame Ruth. She's had a lot to put up with. <laughs> getting worried. The way he's been driving himself these last few months is enough to give anyone a case of nerves. I wish I could persuade him to see a physician. But he snaps my head off at the mere suggestion. Oh, I'm sure he's sensible enough not to push himself too far. At least I hope so.
evening, folks. Good evening, Sheriff. Nice of you to drop by. Is Professor in? I'm expecting him. Anything wrong? I'm getting a posse together come daylight. Posse? What happened? Tim Newcomb was murdered. Oh, no. Body was found at sunset. Dog killed, too. Folks are getting mighty stirred up about it. Who would do such a terrible thing? We're aiming to find out. Any leads? No. Tim put up a terrific fight for his life. Backbone broke and his hunting dog tricks had her neck snapped. This is indeed frightful news, Sheriff. Father, I've been so worried about you. Well, this is more important. Uh, Sheriff, you say there are no clues? Nothing yet. Me and the boys are going out in the morning. Came by to ask if you'd like to come along. Well, I'd consider it my duty if I were feeling in better health. So you're beginning to admit you've been working too hard. Well, I'm afraid I picked up a little virus. I feel rather weak. Afraid I couldn't sit a horse for very long, Sheriff. I'm sorry to hear it, Professor. Well, let me know if there's anything else I may do, Sheriff. I was very fond of young Newcomb. This news distresses me horribly. Uh, let me know how you make out with the posse. Sure thing. Well, good night, folks. Good night. Good night, Sheriff. Ghastly deed. Poor boy. Please, Father, have something to eat. No, 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 I'm not hungry. I'm going to bed. Your father really does look under the weather. I have yet dared, wondering what this amazing experiment would do to me. My transformation was complete within 25 minutes, the fastest period to date. Reconversion to normalcy was the slowest, almost an hour. I was temporarily obsessed with the frightening thought I might never return. Forever to be clutched in the savage grasp of a million lost years. All my basic animal instincts enlarged and inflamed. Power felt as if it were bursting from every pore. I gloried in my strength and ferocity. Modern man was completely subjugated, leaving only the irresistible instinct of survival the hungry urge to kill. I'm afraid. I'm afraid.
be afraid. I won't hurt you. Charlie's food tastes so much better when you eat it out here under the sky. After that hike we took, anything would taste good. Now, how about those pictures you wanted me to take? Yeah, sure. As soon as I change. Now, give me another. Got it. You want to change now? Mr. Groves? No, still asleep, I believe. Oh, here's Miss Groves. Yes? Oh, Mr. Oakes. No, Father isn't well. He's in bed. I... What was that? Buck Hastings. This morning? Yes. Yes, I'll tell Father. Yes, we'll be careful. Thank you. What's wrong? Mr. Oakes. He called to tell us Buck Hastings. He works for the forestry station. Murdered this morning. Murdered? He'd been beaten terribly. Someone with tremendous strength. His throat had been crushed in and practically all his ribs. A second in two days. Mr. Oakes asked me to warn Father about going out alone in the woods. Asked us all to be careful. They think it must be the work of a maniac. Oh. Good heavens! I'll get her. Have some whiskey ready. Drink this. No, please. Don't let him. No one can harm you now. You're quite safe. Please drink this. No. What happened? He killed Buck. I saw him. It was horrible. Horrible. Who killed Buck Nola? Who was it? It killed me. He was inhuman. He was more animal than man. And then he ran after me. He started to pull me by my hair. And then... And then he... Oh, Nola, dear, don't be frightened. You're with friends. You're safe now. Who was it, Nola? Who was it? Had you ever seen him before? I don't know. I never 
never saw anyone like that before. It was ugly. Ugly. His teeth stuck out like a gorilla. He looked like a gorilla. All covered with hair. And the spittle running down from his mouth. Better get her to bed. Take her up to my room. I'll tell father. Celia will help you. Twenty-four ring twice, please. Hello, Webb's Cafe. Is Charlie Webb there? Yes. Hello, Charlie. This is Jan Groves. Yes, I heard about Buck. I'm sick at heart. No, that's why I called. She's here. Nola's with me. Y yes, call Dr. Fairchild and tell him to come over as soon as he can. Yes. Yes, thank you, Charlie. Get me Dr. Fairchild, Susie. What? Well, keep trying every ten minutes, and when you reach him, tell him to go up to Professor Grove's place. Nola Mason, my waitress, is up there, and she needs him. Yeah, thanks. Nola heard that? Sounds like it. She went out this morning with Buck. I wonder if she saw anything. Yeah, it's her day off. She should have worked. You think the same fellow that killed Newcomb done it, Sheriff? He's got the earmarks. Ain't nobody gonna be safe around here until he's caught. What are you going to do, Sheriff? The young uns up to my place, they're so scared they won't come out from under the beds. Why, my wife and sister won't even step outside the house without a shotgun apiece. I put in a call to the state police. It's just too much for me to handle. Can't get nobody out on a full-scale manhunt. Fellers won't come along with their families unprotected. Well, you can't blame us, can you? No, I don't blame you. Well, so long, fellas. So long, so Sheriff. See you later. Jan, do you have any idea what sort of work your father's been doing in his laboratory all these months? No. He would never discuss it with me. I've been inside that room only once. He forbade me ever to enter it. And Celia, how did you get her? I mean, how did she come to work for you? Father found her in Bakersfield. She's Mexican, I believe. About two years ago, she was a charity ward. No family at all, and handicapped. She worked for us a short while in Los Angeles before we came up here. I see. Did you know that she was helping your father in his work? Or rather, being used by him? Why, yes. Oh, you did? Well, it was her job to feed and water his animal specimens. Occasionally, she cleaned the workshop, too. She seems very fond of father. Fond? Or perhaps terrified? I... I don't know. It... It's hard to know what she thinks or feels. Bring her to me. I'd like to ask her some questions, if you please. Well, yes, if you wish it. Now, here? Yes, now, but not here. Downstairs in your father's workroom. Oh, but I'm not supposed to. Please do as I ask, Jan. Believe me, I have the professor's best interest at heart. And yours even more. I'll meet you downstairs. Do you have the key? No. She does. Then have her bring it. All right. Tell her not to be afraid and to answer my questions truthfully. says we shouldn't be here, that my father would be very angry. Ask her why he used that camera. She doesn't know. 
Tell her I said she's lying. Ask her why the professor used her as one of his subjects. She says he never did. Denying it now, too? She says she has no knowledge of how those pictures were taken. She can't remember. Still lying. I don't think so. She seems sincere. I believe I got the picture as far as Celia fits into it. Who? What in heaven's name? Not Celia. Celia. And that fearful, monstrous... Products of your father's work. The professor used that girl in his experiments. It's likely she may be telling the truth when she says she doesn't remember. He may have drugged her first. But... But what... What was he trying to do? And that strange-looking beast? The precise nature of his experiments, I don't pretend to know. But I believe I can guess the results. Your father's been... What are you going to do? That animal seems to have more than a visual acquaintance with this needle. Let's see for ourselves. Help me anesthetize it. Take this towel. But what do you hope to... Maybe we'll find out. Hold this while I drape the towel around the cage. the doctor. We'll come back. She'll suffer no permanent injury, I hope. The shock was about as great as any woman could be asked to bear. But uh, with rest, she'll be all right. I'll uh, make arrangements to have her take her to her home in the morning. Thank you. Don't mention it. If I may say so, there's a mighty lot of feeling about this over the countryside. Hear tell that the regular troop of the state police is combing the mountains. They better catch that thing before any of our local boys do, if they want them in one piece for a judge and jury. Well, good night, folks. I'll show you to the door. Huh. Good night. Night. Good night, Doctor, and thank you. Good night. Downstairs. subjects were strapped unconscious on that operating table under the influence of the professor's injections. Then... Then that man, that murderer, that monster, she said... Nola said he looked like a gorilla, covered with hair, a spittle running from his mouth. He... He 
is. In experimenting with animals, I have had my greatest success with cats, although I've had, unfortunately, to destroy a fairly large number in the process. Unlike the canine species, which has compromised subserviently with man, cats remember their heritage. My first solutions were incomplete and toxic. The animals died. But when later one survived, after I had refined my labors, I alternated with further experiments on a human subject. Celia. The subject was female, and I only partially succeeded in reversion. I attribute my lack of complete success in this instance to some incompatibility between my formula and the basic female constitution. Then it was, I decided to experiment on myself. Oh, they'll kill him. They won't understand what he was trying to do. They'll shoot him down on sight. Not if we find him first. Where to search? Where can we start to look? Any place. As long as we're ahead of the police and the posse. Repeat, didn't hear you. Sheriff Andrews reporting in. Just finished combing through Four Mile Ridge with my fellas. Heading west for Judson's Peak. Over. Come in, Oaks. Come in. Over. Oaks reporting. Me and my group are still beating up the east slope of Hogback Canyon. Nothing else yet. Over. Carson reporting. Covered west section of south lateral. Nothing down. Hold it. There's something down there. Stand by. Spotted something. Fugitive sighted. West section of south lateral. Seen through glasses. Approximately two miles north of present position. All police units core. Order convergence on position indicated. Instruct sheriff and civilian posses to fan out in a circle behind our patrols. Yes, sir. All units alarmed, stand by. Interrupting this program to relay a report from San Marcos State Police Division that the fugitive, thought to be guilty of two brutal murders in that neighborhood, has been sighted by searchers two miles north of Snake Ridge. Sheriff and civilian posse. You know this country better than I. What do you make of that location he gave? West of here. We'll have to foot it. country, but too small for that bird. We'll get him. There was blood around the spot where we saw him fall, but I don't know how bad he was hit. But that's almost a crime, too. Trying to kill a man without giving him a chance. What chance did he give Newcomb and Young Hastings? You don't give a mad dog the chance to bite you, lady. Suppose he's insane. Suppose he doesn't know what he's doing. Two innocent lives taken is enough, miss. Well, she's overwrought. These crimes have greatly upset her. Knowing the victims personally has been on her mind. Well, that's understandable. Most women folk over the countryside feel the same way. 
Gabe Morton speaking. What's on your mind, young fella? Yeah? I'll tell him. Okay. That was Tyden calling. A couple of campers reported seeing someone prowling around by Dawson's clearing. If it's him, looks like he's heading down mountain then. Well, there's nothing much we can do until morning. I better get on home if I aim to get started by sunup. Give you folks a lift? Uh, thanks, no. Car's outside. Just dropped in and got the latest news. Good night. Good night. Where are we going? Charlie Webb's. Charlie Webb's? I have a hunch. I only hope we can make it in time. If I'm right. Ruth! <laughs> There he was, larger than life. The ugliest, meanest looking thing I've ever laid eyes on. Tossed me through the air like it was a feather. Tossed me through the air like it was nothing at all. Caught my head an awful crack on that tree. We found him lying there, out cold. Ruth, Miss Marshall, she's not in her room. The door smashed off its hinges. I reckon he got her, too. I called the sheriff as soon as Charlie told me what happened. He said there wasn't anything we could do till daylight. Otherwise, we'd be liable to shoot each other tramping around out in them woods in the dark. How you feel now, Charlie? A lot of guys should have stayed in Texas. Oh, she seems much brighter this morning. Hear the latest? What's that? Hi, Doctor. Hello, Doctor. They've got the killer holed up in a cave near South Ridge. Tracked him down early this morning with dogs. Ruth! Well, she's there. Is she all right? Well, she was, from what I heard. She called out to the men to keep away and not use their guns. May I use your car? Certainly. Let's go. As long as that gal's in there with him, don't know what we can do. If we try to rush him, he might do her harm. Best thing to do maybe is wait for the state police. Tear gas might drive him into the open. I say let's rush him. He, he wouldn't have no time to do nothing. Maybe we could smoke him up ourselves. Well, I'm for trying it. In there? Yeah. What about Miss Marshall? Got her with him. We figure on trying to smoke him out and trust to luck that she'll get away. It's too dangerous. Well, the only other solution is to get the state police down with tear gas. That's just as bad. You got any ideas? Let me try to reach him. Alone? There's a frightened human in that cave. Whatever he looks like, whatever he's done, one man might succeed with it, where a group will do nothing more than panic him. Well, if you want to stick your head in the lion's den, we won't stop you, just in case. Oh, Ross. That'll be in the way. Hey, look! Get him! No, don't shoot! Flatten out, quick! We'll fire over your head! No, don't! Cover him! Ruth, listen. Edge him back to those rocks, then tell him to run. It's his only chance. They'll kill him otherwise. Watch it, fellas. Don't fire. You might hit the girl. Let's go. Thank <laughs> you. 
months, Professor Groves was laboring to perfect his discovery. He experimented on himself. Here lies the result. We mustn't think of him too harshly. The things he did, and they were terrible. All of us are capable of doing when we give free play to the baseness, which is a part of everyone. He tampered with things beyond his province, beyond what any man should do. And if it was madness, well, those whom the gods would destroy, they, they first make mad. Thank <laughs> you.